This is Twit. From day one of the iPhone coming out, Apple was preparing for something different. As certainly once they realized how successful the iPad was, Apple started preparing with their own chips. Uh, they started moving to technologies like metal. They started to do a lot of things that's really accelerated over the last couple of years with things like Catalyst to move into a new world of computing, an ecosystem they could utterly dominate. And that with the announcement that they were going to finally abandon an architecture that's been around since the 70s, x86, 1974, x86, and move to Apple Silicon, this was, the for me, the piece that would oh, click and the whole thing we uh, seem to come clear to me. We're in a transformational moment. Am I nuts, Dan Morin? I no, not at all. I think this is a big deal from the perspective because I mean, the iPhone in the earliest days they were still sort of figuring out where it was, but once they started rolling out their own processors, I think it was only a matter of time. And increasingly, in the last several years, as they put their own processors in, like the Apple TV and the HomePod and the Apple Watch. You started to step back and say, why isn't this in the Mac? Why is the Mac now the only device they make that is running on somebody else's processor when they have done all this amazing work? Because we would keep seeing when the phones came out, you know, they'd be benchmarking them and these things would be off the charts and you'd be comparing them against laptops. And you'd be like, why this this chip in a phone is outpacing this laptop that costs twice as much and is supposedly like this really powerful device they make. Why can't they bring that ability over to the Mac side as well. And I think Apple has shown time after time that they love controlling the whole hardware, the hardware, the software, everything, the whole device, because they can optimize it to do exactly what they need it to do. And I, I think that it is fundamentally a huge change, obviously for the Mac, but it really only solidifies something that we've seen with the iPhone and the iPad over the last decade or so. And, you know, famously, I think they, you know, originally started out wanting to build something like the iPad and the iPhone ended up being kind of a diversion along the way, uh, which is, you know, of course, hilarious because it's a huge, huge portion of their money now. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that now that they're putting everything they run on their own custom silicon, I think we've just dipped our toe into what is going to be an enormous change for the Mac. And that's saying something for a platform that's undergone so many transitions in its history. I think it speaks a lot to not just the future of Mac, but the future of computing in general, because if Apple is going to be doing, if they're going to be cons competing in this space, in this processor chip space, Intel has to do something to to match that so that PCs can, can build, you know, into the future as well. And this could also really just be a huge improvement for Microsoft and you know, all, all, all the other chip makers, all the other processor uh, manufacturers out there to like step up your game because now Apple's in, in the business too. So you don't get to just sit back and be the, the kings of, of this realm because somebody's coming to take your throne, you know. What happens to Intel, Jason? Is it is it curtains? <laughs> I, I really do wonder about that. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a fait accompli that, you know, Intel will need to step up its game. We've seen Microsoft experimenting with Windows on ARM processors repeatedly. They're back there again now. And, you know, maybe it's definitely possible. If I was Microsoft, I'd be looking at this and thinking, we I want to do what Apple did. Uh -huh. Maybe not you know, with Qualcomm, let's say, uh -huh. or somebody like that. Like, wh why don't we redefine this and get away from Intel? Because Intel isn't doing, you know, Intel isn't working for us either. Uh, so I, I do think it's really hard. This is, you know, the lesson that Steve Jobs uh, learned and then put in Apple's culture from a very early point is don't rely on other people for your critical business infrastructure. And, you know, Intel was a convenient a uh, tool for Apple to get out of the PowerPC alliance and get computers that were actually running at decent speeds when the PowerPC alliance was lagging. But, you know, the iPhone, because it wasn't a computer, they got to rewrite the rules. They ended up developing their own processors for it. And, you know, they've been thinking all this time, you know, what if we could apply this to the Mac? What if we could get away entirely from being on, you know, because I, I would wager that a lot of people's frustration with Apple's release schedule for a lot of their Macs the last decade has been because Apple was waiting for Intel. You bet. And you bet. Intel has had a really bad decade. So this is like the logical, I think, conclusion of what Apple learned from the iPhone, which is, you know, they built essentially the best chip design group in the world 
And why would they not press their advantage? And I, I now suspect that the last two or three years of sort of static Mac development is because Apple's been too busy redesigning their next wave of Macs when they can control all of the parts.